Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Wednesday, March the 9th, 2022. The volatility in the markets, not in the options, in the futures, was extreme today. And with the markets being opening in the United States here, already having gapped up substantially, then just continuing to move up, the individual moves were very disjointed, as best I could say. It was not very easy to trade. When we look at our hourly chart, you would have to think, well, why not? Look, it just went straight up. And that's not how they traded inside these bars and even inside on the smaller time frames. The market would jerk up and then jerk down and then jerk up and then jerk down. Enough that if you were trading a smaller account, you got knocked out of your position and unable to hold on to get to what you needed. And then sometimes you weren't fast enough to get back in to ride it back to, the, to your desired level that you were looking for. Nonetheless, the S&P continues to, to move forward in what I am continuing to label as an A, B, C, corrective wave two advance. Now, what we've gone through, again, I'm just gonna review, is this is best counted as three waves up. So it can't be a five wave rally. There's no way, it just doesn't exist. And that is wave A. Then we drop down in three waves. That is wave B. Then one, two, one, two, three, four, five or three, four, five to complete the C wave. Now, this, in most cases, I would say, hey, we're done, C wave's in, I've marked it as such, we should start to look for a decline. Well, I think we need to be prudent and include that after the bell this afternoon, the Amazon declared a 20 for one stock split. And that has brought the stock up, it was up over a hundred from the close. And now it's basically settled back down to where it is about $80 higher than the close. Now, I'm expecting that volatility to transfer over and be present in both the NASDAQ and in the S&P. Amazon is a part of the S&P. Again, it gets balanced out against 500 other stocks, 499, but still it's a part of, and depending how it gets weighted tomorrow, it usually can come in as a heavy weighted stock. So we will see how they want to open these markets and trade them going forward. So while I can count wave two as complete, at this afternoon's high or the closing highs. I believe it's only prudent that we allow for continued upside and still be within the confines of a second wave. It just, to me, the alternate count that I would have would be the following, that here's the all-time high. This would turn into an A wave. This would be a B wave, intermediate degree. And then we would be in, have completed here a C wave. And, and this would be an intermediate degree C wave. That would then have formed primary wave A. And what we're now putting in is an intermediate A wave, an intermediate B wave, and now we're going to sail higher in a C wave. It still does not necessarily fit, <laughs> but it may have to. And why it doesn't fit is if, that's, if this is being marked as the end of B, I'd be five waves down, it just doesn't fit. But I need to present that because it may only be the, it may be the only choices that we have. So, Right now, I am continuing to feel that we're in a minor third wave decline, but we're still within this wave two uh, advance, which is a three wave advance. So it is corrected. 
Now, again, I'm just going to reiterate what, what Elliot himself said, that second waves can and are possible to retrace nearly all of wave one. It is not the most uncommon factor. In fact, a common uh, Fibonacci retracement level is 618 to 100%. Now, of wave A. So we, we've already surpassed that. In fact, we, we're, we've closed back below the 100%, which came in at 4283. But now I'm going to leave space here that we could see some additional follow through to the upside. So here are our zones moving up from where we closed. 4304. 4315, that's a zone. 4335, stand alone. Then we have 4367 to 4379. Now those should, if this indeed is just going to be a wave two, should contain additional upside. A break above 4419 negates the count, negates it all the way. And so that makes it even more difficult to determine that this is an A, a B. We may have to, an A, a B, and we're working a C wave up. And I'm not sure how that's all going to come out. So for tomorrow, I'll continue to allow for additional upside. There are your resistance, standalone, resistance zone, standalone, resistance zone. If it breaks above 44.19, this count is negated, and we'll have to stand back and figure it out and see where we are and where we're going from here. But one very strong possibility is that this is a, this would be part of the, uh, um, the B wave. And that's, so if we even go up to the four hour, we can have it in. This would be A, B, and we have a C down to that 4103 low. And then this is A, this is B, and we're off to the races in the C wave. So that can sit in the background right now. That would not come into play unless we break above 4419. Right now, we still have enough out there that can drive this market down in a heartbeat, that could just end this buying spree and turn a lot of our new buyers into sellers wanting to get out of what they just did. So we'll see. And we will continue to monitor. Now for tomorrow, allow for additional upside. The market did break above the 200, there it sits, let me just open this up. The 200 sits right here, it broke above, it came back down, it broke back above, but it closed back below 4281. So essentially, if the market just starts to decline from here, then that's gonna put us in a better position that this wave two is complete. A break, a clean break and close above the 200 begins to push us to 4304 to 4315 to 4335, et cetera. If this market decides it's going to start to decline and whether that happens and starts within the Globex session on any news that may be coming out of the Ukraine, Russia, et cetera, then I would expect without any hesitation or problems that we break the four, the eight, the 20, and the 50. Again, the four is sitting at 76. The eight is sitting at 4268. The 20 is at 4245. And the 50 is at 4235. It should break down back below 4200 without many problems and without much hesitation. So therefore, it is going to be news driven and it's just going to collapse, similar to what we have seen. So it would just kind of drive itself lower. And in fact, if two is done and three is in force, it's going to break below 41.48 and it's going to break below 41.38 without much hesitation or problems. That all remains the same. Downside remains the same. All of these support lines remain the same. Right now, we just got to get through wave two. So continue to follow those moving averages, even on down to the very small time frame. The moving averages still help, they still guide. 
If we're breaking down, they guide what happens when these levels are broken. We should start to see some more acceleration as they come off. Same thing going up. When they break like it did here, it broke the 200 and it accelerated very quickly. Obviously there must've been stopped, but it still accelerated very quickly before they brought it straight back down. That's the other thing that I'm talking about with the volatility within the futures market. The volatility ticked it up and brought it back down just as quickly. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Tomorrow, allow for additional upside. You've got your resistance. And if it starts to break down, you've got the moving averages. Those have to be broken pretty cleanly and all of that support needs to be taken out. Have a great trading day tomorrow. The next update will be on Thursday, March the 10th.